All right, folks, just because we can't talk enough football, even when it's March, April, May, June, whatever it is. And plus, since I don't think there are nearly enough Power Five conference games between the conferences, we're going to play them on a whiteboard. So we've done this over the past few weeks, uh, looking in our various conference shows. And this is Pac-12 Breakdown, where we bring in the best bloggers from the conference each and every week. So we got Don King from Last Word on Sports and also Nick Dempsey from Rule of Tree and also Conquest Chronicles on the SB Nation platform for Stanford and for USC. So we're knocking out this week the Pac-12 taking on the ACC. So last week we had the Pac-12 matched up against the Big 12. So think about it, 10 teams against 12. So we had to knock two out of the Pac-12. And we had a 20 to 20 score when talking to the Big 12 bloggers. We had one less Pac-12 blogger. So on our Pac-12 show here on Pac-12 Breakdown, we had a 20 to 10 edge for the Pac-12 over the Big 12. So we'll see what we have here. And at the end, not to influence these two, I'll let uh, these guys know what I voted here in these 12 games, and they're going to hear it play out here, and also the ACC bloggers as well. So we'll start at the top with what we could have had in the college football playoff, but uh, Stanford with the two losses got knocked out. The one seeds from each conference, Clemson, national runner-up, taking on a Stanford team that was possibly the best team to miss the college football playoff. Nick, we'll start with you and uh, this matchup of the Cardinal and the Clemson Tigers. And again, fully healthy 2015 rosters in play. Man, if I got to pick like one dream matchup to make last season, this has got to make a heck of a run at it, these two teams. Uh, final season number two versus final season number three. Uh, both these teams have Heisman runner-ups. That they're dynamic offensive weapons that can just hurt you. You've got two offenses that can put up plenty of points. Um, I think Stanford's better coached. I think Clemson probably has the better defense. Um, having said that, man, this is probably going to be a high-scoring game. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to look very similar to – uh, Stanford versus Notre Dame or Stanford versus Oregon, where there's going to be a lot of points and it's probably going to come down to like the last possession. Um, having said that, watching Clemson take it to Oklahoma and then really hang in there with Alabama, I think Clemson, they might not have a great answer for Christian McCaffrey, but I think they can get enough points. I think Clemson takes it probably on the final possession probably like a 45 41 type of scores i tentatively and regretfully going to go with clemson what a game don we got uh, your stanford cardinal taking on deshaun watson and company yeah i actually think nick broke that down pretty well um first of all and this is one of these things i learned late in the the you know the summer workouts just preseason last year Apparently, David Shaw and Dabo Swinney are close. And Shaw really? actually spent some time at Clemson, you know, just checking things out, getting some tips, training pointers, whatever. They, You know, it's not a lot of schedule overlap, so no reason for them to hold back from one another. Apparently, they've, they've become friends, which I find fascinating. Yeah, you know, definitely. Talk about an odd couple. My goodness. <laughs> but at any rate, um, if there is one thing – that was really, really tough for Stanford last year. The defense got good, and it really did mature through the course of the season, and the secondary got to be pretty solid, and the D-line was thin but produced well, particularly down the stretch, and the linebacking core was really strong and deep. But if there's one thing that was problematic, it was a mobile quarterback. You know, mm -hmm. Deshaun Kaiser at Notre Dame comes to mind. Vernon Adams Jr. at Oregon ran all over the stadium and, you know, put up ridiculous passing numbers as well um, against Stanford because his mobility caused a problem. Um, it's the one thing that was kind of the kryptonite for the, uh, for the, the 2015 edition of the Cardinal. And now go back two, three, four years ago, you know, when you had Shane Scove and some of those guys, uh, Chase Thomas, guys like that, you know, handled Marcus Mariota two times out of three really, really, really well. Um, but last year's defense was not that defense. Um, I actually think Clemson wins, but I do think it would have been close. I think Stanford would have put up some points as well, uh, much like Nick says. Um, I, I'd have to give the edge to Clemson, though, as much as it pains me. 
All right. Uh, basically, I came down to two factors in this game. <clears throat> One, that the two best players on the field, Deshaun Watson and Christian McCaffrey, Watson's got the ball in his hands every play. He can run it. He can throw it. McCaffrey needs a little bit of help to get the ball in space. Uh, the other thing is that the Clemson defensive front was devastating against Oklahoma and a very mobile quarterback. Kevin Hogan showed us some legs late in the season, but nothing close to Baker Mayfield of Oklahoma, who was just pinned in against a devastating Clemson pass rush led by Shaq Lawson and, and, and company. So, man, great game. One, one of the games that I would want to see in college football, no question. Clemson, uh, a sweep here against Stanford. All right, we drop down to our two seedings, Don, with Oregon and North Carolina. I, I won't say anything else because I got plenty to say after you guys uh, size this one up. Uh, Tar Heels and the Oregon Ducks. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Oregon's defensive coordinator? Was it Brady Hope? No, no I guess it wasn't yet just then. Uh, um, honestly, I think Oregon would have had enough D to handle them, uh, you know, e even as previously constructed. Um, and, you know, and VA healthy, you saw what he did you know, for a half at least against TCU, saw what he did for a full game against Stanford. Um, edge to Oregon at quarterback, uh, edge to Oregon at all of the other skill positions. Carolina had a good team. I think underappreciated by many across the country, you know, gave Clemson a, a pretty good fight in the ACC championship game, you know, but full strength to full strength, I got to go with the, the quack attack. All right, Nick, uh, what do you think with the Tar Heels uh, coming off an eight and zero regular season in the ACC, but they lost uh, the aforementioned championship game and also a, a head scratcher against a three and nine South Carolina start team to start the season. Oregon started slow. Vernon Adams got healthy. They put on a run lost uh, the bowl game to TCU. So we got the Ducks in the heels. Yeah, I think I'm, an, I'm one of those people in, in the camp uh, that definitely underappreciated North Carolina. They're just one of those teams that, like, they racked up a really good win-loss record. But, you know, who did they beat? Who do you get ex – What's what win do you get excited about there? Um, yep. Uh, so, you know, I get that perception about them. And then – I also look at, didn't North Carolina lose to, what was it, Baylor, who didn't yeah. have a quarterback? You got Trouts. No quarterback. Yeah. No yeah. Back, no <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Vernon Adams is probably at least a little bit better than Baylor's wide receiver playing quarterback. <laughs> uh, probably a smidge, maybe more. <laughs> Vernon Adams healthy. I, you know, I think Oregon takes this. I don't know. I wouldn't call it a blowout, but I think they're going to win comfortably against North Carolina. Uh, I'd love to be surprised because um, I was really excited when North Carolina clawed their way back into that ACC championship game. But I just don't see – I don't see where North Carolina has any answers to Vernon Adams. Yeah, Oregon's defense struggled, but, you know, I, if they can't stop Vernon Adams, I don't, I don't see what they're going to do there. So I take Oregon probably by a couple of touchdowns. Thank you, Nick. I caught all sorts of flack for my prediction on this one. I said, this is the easiest game on the board. Oregon yeah. kills North Carolina. I think they win by three touchdowns. I think you might be they right. lined up with a third-string quarter, without the third-string quarterback, with a wide receiver at quarterback, uh, without Shaq Linwood at running back, and with their best wide receiver, Corey Coleman, on the sideline. Oregon, with, with uh, Royce Freeman at running back, would mm. destroy this North Carolina defense. And you brought up a great point. North Carolina, exceptional season, overachieved, all those good things. Two best teams they beat, Pitt and Miami. Those are the two best teams I can come up with. North Carolina loses to Oregon, I think, it, it pretty handily, like a 45 kind of 30 game, something in that range. Okay, we drop it down to the three position, Nick, with Washington State. We talked about it, overachieved. Maybe they're not the third most talented team in the Pac-12, but, hey, they certainly stepped up and played very well against serious competition, taking on a Florida State team that underachieved for what we're used to with Florida State competing in the top five and for college football playoff spots and lost three games, looked bad in the bowl game against uh, Houston. So we got uh, Florida State and Washington State. Uh, man, this, this one's a tough one just because both of these teams, I think I've, uh, sort of been wrong about for quite a while now. It's easy to pick against Mike Leach in the air raid, and then they keep coming out and winning games. Uh, and I have, I have, I think perpetually disrespected Florida state 
uh, for a while now. Um, they yes, they struggled to replace their quarterback. Um, and yes, uh, Washington State did much better than I think anyone would have guessed. Uh, I don't want to give too much weight to the bowl game at Houston. Um, not a whole lot of weight. Uh, but I think Florida State probably takes this. I just they, – they're better than they look on paper. Yes, they lost to Georgia Tech in a crazy, weird, awesome ending. And, yes, Clemson beat them by 10. But outside of that, the Florida State was pretty solid while trying to replace the Heisman Trophy quarterback. So as fun as Washington State is to watch, and I will watch just about any uh, air raid game that's on TV, uh, I think Florida State probably takes it. Don, you know what I love to bring up to people that I think missed <laughs> this late night on a Friday night? Uh, you, know, you know I did. Washington State makes the field goal after they drove it from like their 12-yard line all the way down the field after <laughs> the five field goals. They're in the Rose Bowl against Iowa. They would have defeated Stanford, who has all kinds of respect across the nation. That's they right. were that good last year. That's right. And, they would have won the uh, Washington State. North. You're yeah. exactly right. And, and I got to tell you, this is one of those, you know, when you sent the email earlier this week, I was like, oh, yeah, Florida. Ooh, wait. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know. I'm like, I actually think and particularly you give the pirate a month, five weeks to get yeah. ready. I, <laughs> ooh, this one could have been really, really interesting. Um, I, I got to tell you, I, I think I'm with Nick. Uh, I, I think I get. Florida State on, you know, on a two-point conversion to win by one at the end of the game, maybe. But, whoo, it's close. I, and I, I so want to say I think Wazoo would win. And, and I know this. They'd make it interesting. I don't think you'd be able to rule them out. Um, this one is by – this one might have been the most fascinating of the matchups on the board to me anyway. I, you know, and I, it, it, it seems – it's one of those you look at it, you're like, oh, got to be Florida State, blah, blah, blah. But – then you really break down what Washington State was able to accomplish this past season. That was a good football team that just not that many people saw. Mm -hmm. Florida State struggled mightily in offense most of the they season. Did. They only scored in the low 20s against the likes of uh, South Florida and Wake Forest and yep. BC and really some marginal teams that Florida State couldn't break free from. It was just kind of a strange situation on offense where you wouldn't think that they would be void of playmakers on the outside, but they didn't have that guy or two that made big plays. Everett Golson didn't turn the ball over like he had the previous year, but they didn't make big plays on offense. Dalvin Cook bailed them out, and that's what I think would happen. Dalvin Cook's a monster. Yeah, he is. And just the Florida State waves of athletes on defense, they're just so fast, freakishly athletic. I just think it would be a little much – to ask a Washington State, but Luke Falk would drive them crazy. I, <laughs> it 60 times. I think this game would have been an absolute nail biter. I, mm -hmm. I actually think this would have been a blast to watch. I mm -hmm. I do as well. And on the ACC side, understandably, the bloggers thought Florida State. Let's move on to the next game. I really had to rack my brain, and I knew I was going to go Florida State, but I think it would be a nail biter as well. This fourth game, I think we, we match up two very different type of rosters when we talk about USC and a pit team that overachieved. Uh, they kind of showed themselves late in the season, losing to Miami and North Carolina, but they went six and two in the conference. Uh, Don, if we, we let you at this one with USC, of course, emerging as the Pac-12 South champion. Uh... <laughs> really? <laughs> I I'll, I would take Southern Cal, I guess. I mean, they had, they got Kessler, they have Adore Jackson, they've got Juju Smith Schuster. You know, they got all that speed and all that athleticism. Um, they did win the Pac-12 South. Um, I I think SC would probably take it. Um, but I, I, the 2015 USC team is just one that's really hard to get excited about. Um, you know, they were, they were so, they so under delivered relative to the amount of talent they seem to have on the, on that roster up and down, um, you know, and Pitt, Pitt played, you know, some good games, kind of tough. I, I feel like, uh, Chris doesn't have his system. Uh, not Chris. Um, who's the new coach at Pitt? Narduzzi. Um, Narduzzi. I don't mm. feel like he doesn't kind of have his guys yet. 
um, you know, set the way he wants them. They were, they were tough. I thought they played some hard nosed ball and they had some good games and a couple of good wins, but um, I'd have to take over all the, the talent differential. I, I'd, I'd take SC, but it, it, it would have made me nervous. I'll put it like that. What do you think about this one? Uh, we got two four seeds going at it, Nick. Uh, I, I think Don framed it up pretty nicely. You've got a team that should be great under delivering versus a team that probably shouldn't be that great over delivering. Um, yeah, USC has a lot more talent. Not a whole lot of things to get excited about. Uh, I actually thought a lot about their bowl game in which they just kind of showed up against Wisconsin sort of unprepared or underprepared, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Um, you know, Pat Narduzzi likes to, to have a big defensive front and come hard, and uh, USC struggled there. They couldn't seem to keep their quarterback upright. Uh, so I think Pitt would have an advantage there, but I think – if this makes sense to say, I think USC could just sort of out-talent them um, long enough to get by. I don't think it would be a masterful work of 60 minutes of football, but I think, I think, yeah, I think they have enough talent to beat Pitt. Pitt hung in there in a lot of games. They were kind of sneakily good this season. I don't think right. a lot of people wanted to give them that credit. Agreed. Um, but having said that, I, I think USC has enough, ta- more than enough talent to get out of this game. But it's, you know, this is not our perceptions of USC might be Pete Carroll's USC versus, you know, whatever in the world Pitt is. And if you smash those perceptions up, yes, USC should win by a mile. Um, but that's, you know, that's not what we have in 2015 or what we had. So I take oh. USC. I don't think it's very comfortable for anybody. Uh, but yeah, I think USC wins. So I love that. Love that. Comments, uh, yeah, our love that comment. well, friends here, you two are you know, more in credit to Pitt than uh, the East. So, no, we we were let that we were disappointed by USC more than our ACC friends were. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah, like the Florida State reaction, Don. You had the initial reaction is USC. Boom, you check them off. But then you think about it. Okay, Wisconsin's better than Pitt, but personnel and approach similar. They're not tons better than Pitt, but they're substantially, I I think you would find few people that would think Pitt's as good as Wisconsin. They're not. And Wisconsin beat USC in the bowl game. I'm going to throw out the motivational factor. I don't know what it was. Uh, So it wouldn't shock me if Pitt grinded out a win against USC, but USC's losses, Stanford twice, Notre Dame, Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. They lost to really good teams in they Wisconsin. Did. It's probably yeah. the worst team they lost to. And Wisconsin's a legit top 20, 25 team in the country. USC's better than Pitt. They they just win this game. They they just would have to. <laughs> they're just better. They're just they're just more dynamic. Uh, a little thin, but dynamic. Okay, if we drop it down to a five seed game, we've got this one was an automatic for me as well until I started to think about it with Utah Don taking on a Louisville team that started 0-3, lost to Clemson by a field goal, played really well down the stretch, beat Texas A&M in a bowl game against a Utah team that started like a house on fire, limped toward the stretch, played a bizarre game against BYU where they got outgained by a zillion but won uh, 35-0, then 35-28 final. So they hung on for the win. Utah, Louisville. Okay, Booker's playing, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're fully healthy. Utah. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think it's close. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, Utah I, Utah scared me to death. You know, as a Stanford guy, I'd much rather play either USC or UCLA in a Pac-12 championship game setting than Utah. Much rather. Um, again, particularly with, with a healthy Booker who I thought when he was healthy early in the year, you know, was – yeah, nobody knew McCaffrey was going to do what McCaffrey did. You know, so preseason, I thought it was a no-brainer for him as Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year until, of course, that, that unfortunate injury. Um, but that kid is just a beast. And, you know, you give him, get him healthy, get those big offensive linemen headed downhill, um, I don't think Louisville would have had an answer for that at all. And, and if you, you stack the box, then Wilson was just good enough to go over the top on you. So, yeah, I, that one I actually think – with both rosters fully healthy, I think that would be a walk. 
So, Nick, in the first uh, four or five weeks of the season, we saw Utah beat a Michigan team that finished in the top 10 by the end of the year, and they drubbed Oregon. They came crashing down to a certain extent that they were a little bit beat up, and Booker missed some time. So they're fully healthy against Louisville. I, you know, Don took my line. Uh, I, I believe I said this last week. Um, if Booker's on, it, Utah's, you know, very tough to beat. If you don't have an answer for him, I don't see you beating Utah. Because, um, like, I, they, they, the games they lost, Booker was either hurt or when they lost to USC, USC jumped out far enough that they kind of took the running game away. Um, so, you know, unless Louisville's got a decent answer for Booker, I, I'm not going to say it's a blowout, but I think they can really grind them out and really start to – uh, pull away with it later in the game. So I, I'm with Don. I take Utah with a healthy Booker. Okay, I'm going to go against my conventional wisdom, and I got to stay consistent between the two shows. My <laughs> conventional wisdom says take the front four and the front seven of Utah plus Booker. Uh, Lamar Jackson, this kid playing quarterback for Louisville, he really progressed throughout the season, was a much better passing quarterback late in the season, and he is freakishly dynamic. Travis Wilson doesn't excite me, a quarterback for Utah. And, and I got to stay consistent with my pick. So I'm going to change things up and go with Louisville. But I think it would be a really close game myself. All right, 2-1, to one, Pac-12 on that game. All right, this, if I could only watch one game and you throw out the one seeds, I might watch this one. UCLA taking on Miami, Don. Uh, this was one of the two matchups that the two conferences did play last season. So Washington State... Uh, Miami, of course, uh, the Cougars win that game at the Sun Bowl, and UCLA, Virginia Bruins win, so a 2 nothing sweep for the Pac-12 for, for as much as that's worth. But uh, UCLA, Miami, they've, they've seen better times, but they both lost five games this past year. Yeah. Uh, last year, last year's Miami team, frankly, was a bit of a dumpster fire. Um it's it was one of those things I, I the image I can't I will always remember I just can't get out of my head where the guys you know paying the 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 twin prop airplane to fly over the city every week <laughs> fire Al Golden fire Al Golden and uh UCLA was disappointing Josh Rosen though was awfully dynamic you know Miles Jack is going to be a top 15 pick in the NFL so again you know assuming assuming total health Let's say Eddie Vanderdoes, you know, the UCLA defensive line was decimated. So they get that back and fully healthy. Um, coaching's better. The quarterback is better. I like Kaya. I think he's I think he's solid and, uh, you know, he hasn't had a ton of help. Um, but Rosen has a chance to be elite. I think that kid could be special. And he showed it in a few games as a true freshman last year. Um, I'm going to go with the better, the better um, quarterback. And frankly, the better coaching staff. Uh, I, I like UCLA. Yes. So we do revert to the 2015 staff. So Mark Richt out of town goes back to old Al Golden's uh, work on the sideline for Miami, Nick, uh, in taking on UCLA. I just want to point out that there's now a couple of uh, uh, pilots that are out of work. Uh, so thanks, Miami. <laughs> um, no, I think. <laughs> You know, Rosen could be elite, like Don said, but he's also a freshman last year, and he did what freshman quarterbacks do, no matter how talented they are. Sometimes they make some just outlandish decisions. If you get that Rosen to show up, like the Rosen that showed up against USC, Miami's got a fighting chance. Uh, but over the course of the season, I think Rosen showed more than enough to be able to beat Miami. Um, so I think – for pretty much every reason Don just said. I think they got the better coach, the better quarterback. I like with a healthy Vanderdose. I like UCLA's defense better. But if we get bad Rosen, you can get some turnovers out there and get my, let Miami have a chance to get back in it. But I don't think that'll happen. I like UCLA in this one. So to the credit of the kids at Miami, once they got shellacked by Clemson, 58 nothing, a game that I watched, I, I was settling in to watch the game, and then I watched like, you know, 12 minutes on the actual clock and then you know it was 30 to nothing so i was done but uh al golden gets fired the next day and based on their schedule it wasn't too difficult but they were playing some some capable teams in duke and north carolina and pitt 
looked like they were just going to crash and burn. Well, they went out and beat Duke, and they beat uh, North or they barely lost to North. They played decent against North Carolina. They beat Pitt, uh, and they were competitive in the bowl game. They made some stupid calls, uh, halfback option plays that were intercepted in the end zone. So they they played fairly well against Washington State. But UCLA, yeah, uh, Josh Rosen, love the kid. Think he's going to be a great passer. Uh, and I just think UCLA, again, at full strength, you got Miles Jack back, you got the defensive line with Eddie Vanderdose, uh, and the Bruins are at full strength against Miami. I just think they're a better football team, and they win that one. So we'll set you up, Don, for Cal with Jared Goff back from the Combine, uh, taking on NC State. Yeah, you might need a third digit on the scoreboard for that one. <laughs> Cal's defense was better, but it wasn't great. And and I think we've talked this tangentially, at least, Mark. I really like Jacoby Brissett, um, or at least I liked him at NC State, unless at Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but like the NC State edition, and I think he, he was capable of putting it up, and I think he'd have given the, the Cal defense fits with his mobility and his ability to throw. Um, Jared Goff is going to be a top 10 draft pick, you know, in, in a few weeks here if, of the NFL, though, and, you know, set all kinds of records at Cal and lit up the scoreboard. And if they were able to protect him just enough to keep him upright, he would have had a big game here, too. You know, th- this is a pick your score kind of game. Could have been like Cal at Washington State a couple of years back, that 60 to 59 classic you know, with the missed extra point at the end, this this one could have been could have been really wild. Uh, all I would say is take the over. Um, <laughs> honestly, um, wow, it, it's a really really tough pick. I think I liked NC State's team a little bit better, um, but yeah, I wouldn't rule Cal out, um, and they would have lit it up, and 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 you know, if they 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 might have had a, a puncher's chance of outscoring them. Um, so, but uh, but I think I would take NC State in this one, but really by a whisker, and, and that's really it's gut. So so Nick uh, Don set us up pretty well. Uh, we know about Goff. Uh, Jacoby Brissett uh, was inserted as the starting quarterback at NC State, coming off a three and nine. Then he stepped in. They won seven. They went to a bowl game. Won a bowl game two years ago. Lost a bowl game this year. So they went from three win team to. It wasn't all him, but again, 23 to 5 TD to pick at ratio two years ago was something close to that this past year. So he played really well, dual threat guy. So, yeah, a ton of points probably in this one with Cal and NC State. Yeah, I look at this, and honestly, I think Cal uh, is actually really underrated. I think they're one of those teams that their final record is not reflective of how good they are. When you really look at the back half of that schedule, when they went on the road to Utah, then on the road to UCLA, then at home at USC, back on the road at Oregon, wrapped up, I think, with Stanford and Arizona State. After starting off 5-0 and against some questionable competition, and they did beat uh, our beloved Washington State uh, Cougars. Um, But, you know, facing that schedule, they did just sort of collapse, and that was just too much. But I look at both these teams. They had very similar records, just that Cal played, I think, a lot tougher competition. Uh, (laughs) And so I, you know, I think I like Cal a little bit more here, I think. But uh, uh, but the – valid. Yeah, with, with the NC State offense, I think they could definitely score plenty of points. But I like I like Cal. Cal hung in there with a lot better teams. I think their schedule just laid out very poorly and caught up with them. I'm never going to say great things about their defense, but I I, I like Cal. Um, so we'll see. I don't know their coach. Their coach gives me pause because he always makes some interesting decisions. But I think Cal probably a little bit better. Nick, we're on the same wavelength. Uh, NC State graduated from the Baylor School of Non-Conference Scheduling. They played at no one. How <laughs> battle-tested. <laughs> I hate these teams that don't schedule anyone. It drives me crazy. Schedule somebody. <laughs> wow. Play wow. Somebody. <laughs> uh- How- I'm a Stanford grad, guys. I, I just I'm kind of programmed to pick against Cal if it's close, you know. <laughs> is that it's you know it's a little bit reflexive, so maybe 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 that's really what this is. And I could not wait to get this prediction out of my mouth with the ACC guys on when we were going through the bowl games. But if I had a gold truck, I would have driven down to Vegas, <laughs> Mississippi State, and backed it up. 
because they were only like a field goal underdog against Mississippi State, and they got their doors blown yeah. off by Mississippi yeah. State. Yeah. How Cal wins this game? Okay, yeah, and honestly, the Mississippi State Mississippi State matchup was very predictable. Yeah, you know. No. That team was really stout across both lines of scrimmage, and North Carolina State was just not built to deal with that. Nope. Yeah, much different team in Cal, but uh, I just think that they would throw the ball all over the lot and uh, just carve them up. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> now we get down to some questionable territory, especially if we're looking at the right-hand column with the ACC. Yeah, because I guess we're still with postseason teams with the Pac-12. Washington – I got a ton of respect for how they play football. Taking on Virginia, the one thing I'll say about the Cavaliers, guys, Boise State, UCLA, and Notre Dame, three non-conference games. So unlike yeah. NC State, they might have been better than NC State because they only won yeah. a couple less games, but they took on those three in the non-conference. So we got Washington taking on Virginia. Yeah, I'm picturing Mike London shaking his fists at his athletic director. It's like, yeah, man, thanks a lot. You know, I'm trying trying to hang in there. Thanks. Thanks thanks for doing me a solid knot. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Washington in that game. You know, Virginia had showed some signs of life. I, I was afraid their quarterback was killed early in the season during that one game. I mean, that kid just got blasted. Um, but he made his way back onto the field, showed some moxie. They they had some talent, and they definitely put up a fight against everybody they played, you know, most notably Notre Dame. Um, but that Washington team, that defense was top-ranked in the Pac-12. I don't think a lot of people understood how good they were on the defensive side of the ball east of the Mississippi. Um, and I think Virginia would have really struggled to move the ball against against the Huskies. So, I like Washington in that one, and and, I, and that one that I, I felt feel pretty good about. Okay, hey Nick, uh, we knew Washington would be a bit down after they lost all those NFL players on defense from the previous team, breaking in a true freshman and quarterback in Jake Browning, but they played uh, well, had the notable win at USC, and then they win a bowl game against Southern Miss, uh, taking on Virginia. Yeah, I just it's tough for me to get excited about Virginia. I think Washington's a better team than we give them credit <laughs> for. everybody else. I, I mean, yeah, but the, the one game they did look uh, great against Notre Dame, but I believe that was also the game that Notre Dame's quarterback went out. Uh, yeah. So I think Notre Dame was down to their second string quarterback. It won very recently before that their third string quarterback. Um, but they hung in there and they hung, they, they did better than I think expected against UCLA, but I just, I don't know how Virginia beats Washington. Yeah, okay. yeah. they didn't beat a lot of teams. Uh, I think I got to go with Washington on this one. Yeah, I love uh, Washington's front seven on defense. I think those guys really hit and get after it. And like Don uh, pointed out, I would have all sorts of trouble saying Virginia's scoring against Washington. I, I see the Huskies winning like a, you know, a 20 to 13 kind of game, 20 to 10, something in that range. Uh, so the, the Pac-12, and this is less than scientific here, but with our three brains together, uh, we, we've got the Pac-12 on a 13-2 to two run in these last five games. So it, yeah. it comes down to more bowl teams for the Pac-12 taking on non-bowl teams for the ACC. So this is where we talk about it every week, practically, the depth of the Pac-12. And again, this is non-scientific, but we're starting to see some matchups that are starting to lean. Yep. So we got uh, Don, Arizona State, pretty good football team. Didn't meet expectations, but still, they win six. They lose by one point in a bowl game, taking on a team that didn't even come close to playing in postseason play in Syracuse. Yeah, the Solar Satans would kill Syracuse. Uh, <laughs> that, that's what they needed during their regular season and, you know, didn't get, didn't get such an opportunity. But, you know, Burko was a little disappointing to me. I expected him to play a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. um, and it was one of those things where they couldn't quite overcome that. Uh, but there was still some talent on that football team. Um, and and I, th I think they would just destroy Syracuse. What do you say here, Nick? Uh, Sun Devils at six and seven. Syracuse, I believe, at three and nine. Yeah, Arizona State was disappointing this year, but they weren't that disappointing. <laughs> I, I don't see how 
you know, I just don't, unless, you know, you never want to rule anything out because it's college football, but I just don't see Syracuse competing in this game. I, I think Arizona takes that all day. All right, Syracuse fans, I apologize. I believe they went four and eight, three and one non-conference, won a game in the ACC. Okay. All right. Arizona and Georgia Tech. You talk about differing styles here. Ooh. Georgia Tech oh, won the Orange Bowl, finished in the top 10 in 2014, came crashing down to three and nine last year, but they run the triple option. Always one of the best rushing attacks in the country, but uh, things went terribly wrong. Arizona is going to throw it all over the lot, obviously out of the spread, the read option, a new Solomon. So this is key. You talk about key to our rules here. A new mm -hmm. Solomon's back. Scooby Wright's back. Arizona's ready to go, Don. Yeah, and Arizona wins for those two reasons exactly. You know, in Georgia Tech, you're right, three and nine record, really disappointing. Um, you know, had had Patrick Scove as a grad transfer uh, at running back out of Stanford over to Georgia Tech for his his final year of eligibility, and had some good games, particularly early in the season. You know, one of those three was that game we were talking about earlier, uh, the wild one against Florida State. Um, but I still like Arizona. You get backs, you know, a new Solomon and Scooby Wright. Uh, I, I think, you know, those are two of the most dynamic players in the entire Pac-12 conference. Um, I think Arizona takes that one, if, if fully healthy. Yeah, Georgia Tech, a uh, highlight of their season was that, that crazy block field goal against Florida State that they ran all the way back for a touchdown to upset the Seminoles. Otherwise, they won. They won two non-conference games against the likes of Tulane and a Western right. Carolina type Middle Tennessee somebody, and that and that was it for Georgia Tech this year, Nick. Yeah, man, it's it's one of those things where when you run that option, uh, you slow the game down, you limit the amount of possessions everybody gets. Um, unfortunately, that shrinks your margin of error and you have to actually score points time of possession doesn't mean anything if you don't score points so they hung close in with a lot of teams but you know they just weren't there most of the time um unless arizona has uh, a particularly terrible time stopping the option i don't see georgia tech winning this i think arizona also had problems i believe they had to go 10 weeks straight without a, a bye week i think their bye week was insanely early uh, so that, I think, wore on them and the injuries. Eventually, that's going to lead up to some disappointing weeks for them. But I just don't see Georgia Tech being able to pull it out. Uh, I think you got to go with Arizona here. Yeah, i got to tell you, Rich Rod's three three five. that funky defense they run against the wishbone would be fun. That would be interesting to watch. Yeah. That would be that would be fascinating. That might be worth the price of admission. But, but again, I think a healthy Scooby writes the difference. Yeah, he just gets a lot of people on the ground. Hey, Nick, we'll stay with you. We've got a Buffs team that was typically about three scores behind all the good teams in the Pac-12, although they gave USC fits on a mm -hmm. Thursday night. They're taking Them, everybody the else. team. Get this. Their one ACC win, 3 nothing over Boston College. <laughs> uh, oh, man, Wake Forest. Yeah, I you know, college <laughs> – Colorado is getting better. They're certainly they're miles <laughs> away from where they were. Uh, they're not there yet. Uh, I think they're really excited that Oregon State's in the conference this year. Um, <laughs> but uh, Wake Forest, you know who? Like what? What was the highlight other than Boston College? What was the highlight of their season? I, uh, I can't they played remember. a really close game against a decent Indiana team. But they lost. Wow. Uh, wow. Stop selling, Mark. Think they sold Army. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, Colorado, man, I got to go with Colorado, I guess, but I'm not excited about either one of these teams. I think, I think this is one of those games where one team will have more points, but I'm not prepared to say either one's a winner type of deal. Uh, so I think I go with Colorado. But because I think they're on more of an upswing, Wake I just don't think had really anything to get excited about. Yeah, I'd take Colorado, uh, Lou Fow and, and Nelson Spruce on the outside. Just enough talent at the skill positions to get it done. You know, Wake's offense was was inept all season, um, and you know if Colorado had a weakness is that they struggled to stop people. Well, I don't know if they would have struggled that hard to stop Wake. Uh, give me the Buffaloes. Mm -hmm. 
I am right there with you guys. I didn't have to think too long and hard. I do think of Colorado's got some talent. They're much improved. Uh, uh, just didn't show up against the, the the depth of that schedule that they have to face versus Wake. Um, they did play Florida State tough and uh, beat BC, but uh, that's pretty much it for, for Wake. So we got a clean sweep with Colorado. And lastly, this is about the craziest stat I can come up with off the top of my head. BC was carried uh, a number one ranking defensively through almost mm -hmm. the entire season, finished like top three in all the major categories, pass defense, run defense, points against, yards. And they went 0-8 in the ACC with the number one or two ranked defense in the country. That's how anemic the offense was. So the way the aforementioned 3 nothing game, Wake-BC. BC had the ball inside the Wake 10-yard line like five times, and they either – got pushed Ouch. back by penalties and had to try like a 45 yard field goal or they got stopped on downs and they had a chance to win at like the two or three yard line at the end of the game. They fumbled. And yeah, that that's uh, that's the Boston college Eagles for you, but they're taking on Oregon state who went 0 and nine. So we got a combined 0 and 17 in conference play here. Yeah. So, so BC, you know, uh, my, my last word colleague, uh, Al Preziosi is a, a freshman at Boston College, so the, the fighting Preziosi's <laughs> great defense, set offensive football back 57 years in the NCAA this past season. They were just <laughs> awful. And Oregon State struggled mightily in a very deep Pac-12, but Mark, you and I have talked this before, played a fantastic first half against Stanford, you know, really put up a pretty good fight and, you know, had to actually be beaten, you know, they didn't just roll over, you know, Stanford actually had to show up and play and had to put them away. Um, and they gave Michigan fits. Um, and that was a really, really good Michigan team. And that game was played at the big house. So there was some, at least a little bit of moxie to Oregon state. I, I don't think Gary Anderson has his guys yet ready to play his way. Um, you know, but if I'm in Corvallis, I probably feel decent about the future and, and, I think they would put together enough to to beat that Boston College team, even though that defense really was nasty. Their offense was just abysmal. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it could be that the Beavers wind up scoring a defensive touchdown and they win the game 6 nothing after getting the extra point block. I mean, you, it, it could have been that kind of a thing. Yeah, that uh, Stanford-Washington State game is when, when you do a gut check that, that you know you're a – serious college football fan because I can't watch Oregon state play all year because there are other games on, but it was like a Friday night. Yep. It's uh, you know, two in the morning here, but I'm going to watch every second of that because I want to see Oregon state for the one time this year. And it was like a one score game until late in the third quarter. The exactly. Michigan game, I believe was seven to six late second mm -hmm. quarter. And then it was 35, seven. They lost, yeah. they got blown yeah. out in the second half, but it was, they had a, they had a punt snap over the kid's head Right, that uh, really broke open that game for the Wolverines. So, what do you see here, Nick? Uh, Oregon State and BC. Well, the next time you hear someone say defense wins championships, uh, <laughs> kindly refer them uh, to the Northeast, um, because you know that defense was phenomenal. And I watched that Boston College Notre Dame game. Yeah. Where they had, I think Boston College had like five or six takeaways. It was nuts. Yep. But they could, they like, how do you go, go plus six in turnovers in a game and lose? I don't know. Granted, Notre Dame's great, but it's it's got to be just infuriating for, for Boston College fans to have a world class defense and you can't beat anyone or hardly anyone. That's got to be so disappointing. Um, you got to come at that defense for a full 60 minutes, though. I think Oregon State should have the talent. Um, but Boston College is the type of team they can get, like, a pulse from their offense, like just a little bit of a heartbeat. They should have won a lot more a lot more of those games. Uh, having said that, we never saw it all season. I can't just assume it's going to randomly show up in this, this hypothetical matchup. So I – you have to go with Oregon State, but man, it's going to cost them because that that BC defense will beat them up pretty pretty badly for sixty minutes. This is how good the BC defense was. Uh, take the Florida State game, and we've mentioned that Florida State didn't have a vintage Florida State offense, but still, speed and talent all over the field. 
BC uh, turned the ball over in their own territory at like the 20 yard line. So Florida State had a short field for one touchdown. The other touchdown was a scoop and score by the Florida State defense, and they lost 14 nothing to Florida State. That was the uh, the extent of the Florida State offense against BC. That's got to be heartbreaking. Oh, that's heartbreaking. It's awful. Ooh. So, be uh, champ. Uh, Defense don't win championships necessarily, but in my book, they're going to beat Oregon State. I I wrestled with that one. I don't know. I mean, when you keep a game close like that, one break, you know, one mistake from Oregon State can, you know, pick six, and BC could win that game. So uh, it just didn't happen, like, at all this season, even when they had, you know, five, six-plus turnovers on somebody like Notre Dame. Yeah. But – the offense was just abysmal. It was yeah. Really bad. So it's basically one of those things where, like, your defense has to become the, you know, the best part of your offense at that yeah. point. If, if the they're not scoring. I, I don't remember the kid's name at, at <laughs> Oregon State. Mark, I think we talked about this at the time, too. But they, they've got that, that young kid, the quarterback, really more an athlete back there. But he was kind of dynamic. And, and I think even a good defense, a good disciplined defense, he could give some trouble. So I, I would stick by my Oregon State pick on that one. Who's Seth Collins? That, uh, was that his name? Yeah, that's him. You know what? I just talked to Gary Anderson last week. Seth Collins. Bye-bye. Really? Really? Yes. Oh. What happened? I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> that's why wow. you got to watch the interview, Don. Yeah, I guess I do. I'll love yeah. well. My guess is there's still a lot of he's not gonna he wasn't gonna answer that question is my guess but right well that's unfortunate yeah well, I didn't think we're, talk, we're didn't talking we're talking 2015 so I guess that doesn't matter we'll worry about next year you know, so here's so. the scoreboard guys uh, 12 games Pac-12 ACC no ends no Duke or Virginia Tech playing in the series here. Uh, Three of us, so that's three times 12, that's 36 games. Pac-12 wins 27 to 9. Yeah. One other participant from the ACC bloggers, uh, Pac-12 won 30 to 18. Yeah. So they were pretty unbiased. I I give them credit. I agree with that. But, yeah, once you got past the first three games, it really started to show the Pac-12 depth. Yeah. yeah, and the ACC lack thereof. That's really yeah. the issue. They're, they were pretty poor at the bottom of the conference. Yeah. All right, guys. I love doing this. So do I. This is this fun. Is great. We'll, uh, we'll uh, possibly throw out the SEC or the Big Ten next week. That should be a whole lot of fun. I oh, agree. boy. I agree. Oh, boy. It would be a good time. Um, Pac-12 breakdown every Wednesday night, uh, 8 o'clock uh, on the West Coast, 11 o'clock on the East Coast with uh, – the best bloggers around, including Don King from Last Word on Sports and also Nick Dempsey, Conquest Chronicles, and Rule of Tree. All right, gentlemen. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Always, always fun.